Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from the Developer's Desk and today we're going to take a look at how we can estimate what the image exposure will be even before we've captured the image. Then we'll also look at how we can use histograms after the image is captured to see how well it was exposed. Now when you're tethering, you know, you can use live view and this allows you to see uh, the image before you capture it and but we have some things within control my Nikon that allow you to also see what the exposure is going to be. There's really three ways to look at histograms and exposure. Live view, this thing, or inner and outer exposure markers, and after the image has been captured with the tracker in the browser, and these things right here on the film strip. Okay, so this is the rock that we uh, are going to use. It's uh, somewhat shiny. Picked this up at a gem show not too long ago. I have no idea what this thing is, uh, but it uh, has really nice colors. And we'll be using a D800 on AC power on an axial lighting setup. We have a backlight and a foreground light at the same color temperature, and we're already white balanced. And then we'll add in a gobo here so we don't get any direct light from the light onto the, uh, onto the rock. Okay, so we have the rock and the lighting is set, so let's turn on live view and uh, see what we have. Okay. So um, now we need to bring up the live view option. So if we go to the view menu and layers, this is where the options are. And these are really options within the Control My Nikon program itself. We're really not changing anything um, with the images that are being sent to us as a stream 24 times per second by the body. It's really just how we display them. So for example, uh, up here in image, uh, we could turn the image on and off if we wanted to, or change its opacity. Um, nothing you see here in this Layers tab will change what the final captured image is. Okay, so for example, we could turn it to grayscale if we wanted to, which is real handy, and I'll show you uh, in a little bit why. Okay, so, um, so we have our rock there, and um, the first thing I have is I'm just going to turn off the grid here and get rid of that. Now we're talking about um, exposure and we want to know if we've blown anything out. I mean this white out here looks pretty bright um, and you know in a high key image like this you may have a backlight where you want the white to be blown out on the edges uh, so you can easily uh, cut it out in post-processing. Um, now we can see a little bit of reflection I think here. This is the rock's a little bit shiny but that's okay for what we're doing here. Uh, on this video. Uh, let's see what we can do. Now, I also want to make sure the black isn't too dark. We don't want to blow it out uh, dark. So what we can do here is go down to, uh, well first of all, let's go to the histogram, which is the H up here. So the histogram shows us uh, the actual luminance histogram for this 426 by 640 image that has been sent by the body to control my Nikon. And this is a fairly low quality uh, live view image here. It doesn't get any higher, unfortunately, because it can't uh, pump that much uh, or more data down a USB 2 cable, I guess. But let's see what we have. And if you were to see this image, um, you know, maybe in your collection and you look at a histogram, you'd say, wow, it's blown out. Is my image ruined? Well, because it's high key in this case, this stuff could be blown out and it's not ruined. Um, so a histogram for an image like this, um, not that useful. If it was another image um, where you don't have it high key, then it would be better. Um, you see this little red box here indicates that there's a, been a blowout here, and if it's too dark, it, uh, it'll show up here. In fact, I'm just going to turn the lights down a little bit here, and we can see the histogram slowly going left. Pretty soon it's going to warn us that something is blown out too dark. Any time now. There we go. Bring the lights back up. Of 
Okay, so there's no warning marker on the uh, left side for when you blow it out low. Uh, okay, well, let's take a look at a different way to see uh, uh, these warning markers. And uh, let's uh, turn off that. And now let's go to this exposure inner and outer. And um, first of all, I could set this and just turn it to visible on. And uh, what this is telling me here is uh, show me all the areas that are have an exposure or have a histogram value below this and higher than this. Now it goes from 0 to 255 is how it's calculated. So um, anything that is currently lower than this, lower than 5 or higher than 250 uh, is going to be highlighted in this color. So we could change a color if we want. I'm just going to leave it with this. We could change the opacity of that overlay. And uh, this is based on a luminance calculation, which takes all three channels to determine what the intensity is. But you could try each uh, uh, color channel as well if you wanted to. We'll just keep it there at luminance. So uh, now it's worth noting that uh, not all Nikon bodies have the ability that, while in live view, to be able to do an exposure preview. Um, some of the, uh, the, the less expensive bodies uh, don't uh, don't allow this and you know if you turn well in live view if you turn the lights up the image in the live view will automatically darken it has like an auto gain on it and and that's no good now some of the cameras allow you to get around that um, but um, really uh, and and that's a good thing but the ones that don't allow you to do it you're, you're kind of stuck and this technique will not work while in live view Okay, so let's take a closer look at this. Uh, first of all, you note that um, it seems to be showing this white area as being above 250. So if I uh, maybe decrease this, you can see how it will actually cover more area because these darker areas have a lower value. So anything above 90 is being shown. Uh, and uh, let's see if I go all the way up here to 255, that means that these areas are definitely blown out. Uh, these areas here near the edge of the object um, aren't. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, also adjust the dark down a little bit uh, to zero. So uh, if I was to increase a little bit here, you'll notice these black areas will start to be lit. There we go. So um, that means that anything less than 34 uh, is going to be lit up here. Uh, so let's just put it down to zero. And we'll try experimenting with the lighting. So first of all, I'm going to decrease the backlight. Backlight goes down, so there should be less of an area that is less than zero. Now, on a high-key image like this, I do want to blow out the backlight. This makes it a little bit easier for me to cut it out uh, in post-processing. But I want to make sure that those blacks there um, aren't uh, too black. So uh, I'm going to decrease my top lighting. Pretty soon you should see those start to light up. Actually, we can't even bring the light down far enough to do that. At these settings here, we can't even get the black to blow out at all. So it doesn't have a lot of dynamic range, this image. So I'm going to bring up enough light for the top here. And I know these areas are white. I'll bring it up a little bit more. And as long as we don't bring it up so much that it starts blowing out on the top, we're OK. Okay, I'll adjust my backlight a bit. So now I'm going to bring it up to 5, down to 250. Because when we had it to 0 and 255, this shows us the areas that definitely are blown out too dark or too bright. If I bring it up to 5, 
down to 250. I have a little bit of a, a cushion here. And um, so I can, if the lighting changes a little bit, I'm probably still going to be fine. So now let's take a look at uh, the inner exposure. So I'm just going to disable that. Now this is the same idea, except it shows you areas that have a uh, histogram value, in this case between 6 and 249. So you can see the outer actually sits outside that. From 5 and less, it's this pinky purple, and uh, from 6 all the way to 249, it is green. Two fifty and above is um, going to be this pinky purple again. So let's uh, go ahead and change this a little bit. And uh, if I increase a little bit, you could see now if we wanted to see an area of an image that's exposed only between say fifty five and one hundred ninety eight, this is how you could do it. So it's really up to you know your workflow. Uh, if you'd rather use the inner or outer or both to be able to determine what your uh, exposure is. Now sometimes when you overlay uh, these uh, colors here they can get a little bit mixed up with the background colors. So what you can do up here is you can go to grayscale or you can even turn the image off altogether. But now it's almost like a mask. Turn the image back on, turn the grayscale off, change the opacity of the background image as well. Okay, bring that back up. And like I say uh, before, uh, none of what you do here is going to change the quality or the colors or anything of the final captured image. Okay, so for me, this looks like an acceptable um, exposure for capturing. And so uh, let's give it a try. I'm just going to click on capture and or you can click on the capture button here as well. And we'll go to the browser. Back in live view we can of course preview what we think the exposure is going to be. And when you get into the browser you could see what the exposure really was that you captured. So I'm just going to go back to live view and just take a mental note of what this looked like. Yeah, these darks and blacks. Yeah, it looks just like it. And you could tell that you have a camera that has exposure preview because what you see here is going to be a bit of a grainier version of what you see in the final captured image. So uh, I'm just going to double click on it, which is how we bring up the uh, magnifier. And we're really not concerned about focus too much here, um, but we are concerned about the exposure. So now in the browser in the upper right hand corner, you'll see this is a histogram and it's and it's a tracking histogram. So uh, what it's saying here, and if I left click on it, it goes to the right um, channel, click again, green, click again. This is uh, blue and this is the total luminance, all channels combined. And just like we saw in live view in the histogram, it shows us a little bump and then it shows an area that is blown out. Not that helpful. However, if we go back to the browser, it shows us the same thing. But now I can move my mouse around and it'll show you. You see that vertical line moving around there? So whatever pixel is underneath my uh, mouse cursor there, this should be a black. So it's on the left hand side. Still very dark, a little bit lighter. Go into this blue here, yep. Yeah. Go to a brighter area in here. You can see how that vertical uh, tracking bar shows you what's underneath the cursor. Now, if I go over to the right hand side here, you see how it just pegs on the right, goes slams to the right. This is the area that we uh, blew out on the live view. And I have to go back to live view. I'll turn this and this on. Yeah, this pinkish area here, um, if I bring this all the way down to uh, a zero, that's definitely blown out. 
Okay, so we'll go back here to the browser. Oh yeah, it's blown out. So that's one way to see the histogram. Now another way to see the histogram is in here. These are uh, this is the uh, this is the film strip. So uh, if I go here and to configure, I just right clicked in the film strip. You can control the information that you display in the film strip, which uh, uh, file types and so right now I've got the thumbnail and the file name, and you can see you can move that around and bring that down. But I also want the histogram. So you just click on this button here, and now we have a histogram. Now let's say that I just want the histogram uh, at the very top. Good enough. Okay. So now here's the histogram of this other rock. And now this one and this one. Now when you hold your mouse here, they're not interactive or anything like they were up here. But it gives you just kind of a quick reference of what the histograms of uh, your images are. Okay, so I'm just going to go to this folder here and it's going to load in the images and generate the thumbnails. And you can see when it generated the thumbnails, it created the histogram for each one. So if you have images that are not high key, maybe for example shots of these flowers, you can just do a quick look and uh, see what the exposure was without having to go up here and look at it in the upper right hand corner. And you could want to do something like this. You can close that, you can close that, give yourself lots of room. Bring it down like this. And it just makes for browsing a little bit easier. Now these ones are indicating that um, there is areas that were blown out just too dark. This black area here and uh, you can see it has a little red marker here. This shows uh, in the browser, but it didn't show when we're in live view. And I'm just going to bring up the, uh, the sidebar here by double clicking on that line. And I'll use the tracker and you can see, yeah, this black area here is definitely to the left. Go here. Okay, back to the left. Yeah, blown out. I have no idea why people do this. Um, it looks really freaking dangerous. It just looks sad for some reason. Okay, back to what we were doing. So, so that's a, a way to do it. Now, if we go to uh, workflows here, and I'm just going to go back to focus stacking here for a moment because I know I have some images. You know, I could also um, put the histogram here. So I go to configure histogram. I'm just going to bring it all the way to the top. And uh, if you wanted to, you can get rid of the file name and maybe even the thumbnail. Yeah, you can put some other information in here. There's a whole, whole bunch of it. And let's put back the uh, thumbnail. So each one of these workflows that has a separate image display here, uh, you can also check out uh, what the, um, the exposures are with the histograms. Have fun. Thanks for watching.